Hi again, wrestling fans, and welcome to another action pack edition of AIWF Ringside Wrestling. I am your host, Mad Matt Carter, uh, being joined as always by AIWF Commissioner Rick Diesel and AIWF Hall of Famers and part of the production crew now, Brian and Reagan Danzig. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> Reagan's pushing buttons in the back. Ryan's out front on on play by play, and I must say, doing a quite g- a good job of ring announcing in my absence. Thank you very much, Brian. Uh, I do what I can, man. It 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 does my heart good to know that that's in capable hands. Wow. So, um, uh, but hopefully, I will be back sooner than later. Uh, big wrestling weekend. We got a lot of things to talk about. Um, so I guess we'll just go ahead and get right into it. Let me go ahead and share my screen and we'll look at some pictures real quick. Can y'all see the slideshow? Yes. All right. This is AIWF ringside wrestling for November 26, 2023. I hope everybody had a happy Thanksgiving and way too much to eat. Did everybody on this panel get enough to eat? I know I did. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, too much. Yeah, but that's what you're supposed to do on Thanksgiving. That's right. That's fat guy Christmas. You get all the food and don't have to worry about the presents. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, anyway, we hope you out there had a great one too. You can find us on Instagram and AIWF Mid Atlantic Wrestling and Diesel D E E Z E L uh, two four seven. That's where we're at on Instagram. So come check us out there. You can also find me on X at Mad Matt Concord. It's not just limited to wrestling, but we do do some wrestling stuff there. And of course, if you'd like us to announce birthdays, anniversaries, or questions, you can put those in the chat. If you're watching on Facebook live, we'll be glad to look at them and read them if we catch them. Uh, But if you'd like us to do a formal announcement and maybe do something at the live shows, reach out to us at this email address, Matt's new mailbox at yahoo.com. That's Matt's new mailbox at yahoo.com. Use the subject line AIWF ringside. And we want you to include pictures so we can put them up here and show them to everybody. So birthdays, anniversaries, or just questions about wrestling in general. We got you covered, man. Just use that email address. Matt's new mailbox at yahoo.com. Also with a big one, two punch on YouTube. We've got not one, but two channels for you to check out the AIWF network and AIWF ringside wrestling which is up to uh, ringside wrestling. Rick diesel. I'm happy to report is up to 1,061 subscribers as of today. And last, get along. Week, last week, while Jack was on the program, we cro- crossed 10 50. And, uh, you know, again, I know it's not like, you know, uh, Dutch man tells numbers or anything like that, but Hey, to uh, be a small independent in Northern North Carolina, I think it's pretty damn good. So for us, it's, outstanding so thank you for all the support you can reach out to us there as well and uh yeah so only thing i want to tell you about the youtube it's very important that you like the when you see something you like that you hit that thumbs up button and like that video uh subscribe to the channel and most importantly ring the bell so you'll get a notification wherever you are either on your desktop or on your cell phone whenever we add something new and we'd love to have you uh, check out both our channels. There's a lot of similar videos on both of them, but you can only see this show and fan cam footage exclusively on Ringside Wrestling. And you can only see our big shows like Fright Night and Deal with the Steel in their entirety on the AIWF network, plus a ton of the old Martinsville TV shows, which just. <laughs> and that's actually <laughs> going pretty good. Too. Yeah, people yeah. people like that. Ah, uh, but anyway, so we got. I I, I want to kind of ease into this nice and easy now, and because I don't know how much we can are going to reveal to the public right away. But it regards our winter schedule. How much do you want to tell them, Rick Diesel, or what? Well, as everybody who's been with us for all these years knows, it it you know at, at, at poor building up there, it don't get warm easily. So this year. We're going to uh, at least uh, not do anything to laugh the first of the year. M- maybe February. You know what I'm saying? But now the uh, uh, we've been actually working on next year's schedule, but we haven't got it confirmed with the park yet. So it'll it will either start in February or after the anniversary show, which is the first week of March. So it, it kind of all depends. I've I've already getting been getting my normal 
messages on Facebook going, hey, when's the next show? I'm like, well, you know, I would say when hell freezes over, but I'm afraid it might happen. Yeah. Yeah. Well, <laughs> you know, well, that, they're predicting a colder winter in this part of the yes. country right now. Um, you know, like you said, because of the El Nino, I didn't realize it was because of that. I just saw a map come out on NPR that was showing that this area was expected to get more cold. It was going to be colder than normal this year. And so. more moisture. Yeah. El Nino always brings more moisture. They, um, I'm hoping I'm going to get me some snow days. For my shoot job, I haven't had a snow day. I, I don't even know the last time I had a snow day. Mm -hmm. It's been insane. <laughs> Not to brag about my shoot job and getting snow days off, but it is a nice perk of a very hard, of a very hard job. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. That, that that's that would be great. Uh, hopefully, we do see some snow this year. I ain't looking for it to snow like it did in fourteen and shut down the entire city of Charlotte. Uh, that wouldn't be. That was not fun. That was not fun at all. But. That that's funny that we bring up a blizzard because one of the stories Shane Douglas told was getting snowed in with Ricky Steamboat in '93. Remember '93 had that huge blizzard. Mm -hmm. He's talking about um, getting snowed in in a motel with yeah. uh, during that when they were in Atlanta filming, and oh. stuff. It was very interesting. Yeah, because he he was like, oh yeah the. That, that's in Georgia. They don't they don't get blizzards down there. I'm from Pittsburgh. That's <laughs> that, yeah, we get snow all the time. It's no gonna be no big deal. <laughs> he said they were in that hotel room for seven days, mm -hmm. yeah. trapped in for yeah. seven days. Yeah, man. Southern towns cannot handle snow, man. The, the mm -hmm. that snowstorm that I'm talking about that shut the city down right after we moved down here was three inches, I think we got here in Concord. And and uh it wasn't it wasn't even that much in Charlotte, but the, I mean, the whole city shut down. I mean, they were sending out. We're not made for snow down here. No, mm -mm, not at all. So that's the deal with the winter schedule, folks. We will try to do our best over the next few months to keep you entertained the best we can, digging through the yeah. archives and whatnot. And having right, yeah, we got plenty of stuff from the archives. Oh, yeah. yeah, more than enough. More than enough. Yeah, you know, and it give the guys uh, a chance to. Uh, heal up, recuperate, and, mm. uh, yeah, maybe do some traveling, some other promotions, you know. And it gives us a chance to to do some other things, like, you know, work on the format for next year. And, mm -hmm. and uh, we, we, we're, we're toying around the idea of doing some set changing, stuff like that. So. Oh, wow. I like the one we got now. I think it's beautiful. We, we, well, we, I guess the it's just we've had it for so long. You guys, yeah, it's, to it's time to at least do something to it. All right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but anyway, so uh, that's the deal with the winter schedule, guys. Not not much news there, but we'll. Uh, and it is a it is. Don't want any rumor started. This is just a winter break. <laughs> yeah, keep, keep winter uh, break. <laughs> keep tuning in here and yes. add uh, Facebook. And as mm -hmm. soon as we decide, yeah. I mean, worst case scenario, the next show will be uh, the anniversary show, March second and third, the whole week. Right. But, well, yes, I mean, you know, that, that's, that's worst case scenario. Yeah, we have right. plenty of online stuff going on, like you said. So, yeah, absolutely. All right, let's uh, let's pay a few bills real quick before we move on to some of the big news going on around the wrestling world this weekend because it's that's a it's been a lot going on. Uh, let's see, and, uh, here we go. Premier Auto Detailing. There's somebody watching. Joshua Bowman is not only watching this show, but he's also watching the main event. <laughs> That's okay too. So thanks, Josh Bowman, for yeah. <laughs> a little double double dipping of wrestling. <laughs> yeah, man. And thank you, Josh. I hope you're enjoying everything at WrestleCade. Uh, Premier Auto Detailing, hands down, the best car cleaning service in town. Whether you've got an old jalopy, you just got the wheels back on it and ready to take it down. Uh, or you own a business where you have a fleet like a bunch of trucks or a used car lot. Uh, they do commercial and residential jobs. Uh, they, hey, if you just like me and don't like to wash the car because you're kind of lazy, they can help you out. All you got to do is give them a call 336 883 5722. 336 883 5722. Premier Auto Detailing. They can get you good and set up. 
uh, and get that vehicle looking showroom new for you. And, and they can do it at a fair price too. So you might be able to talk them out of, to even going outside Surrey County if the price is right, but give them a call 336-883-5722. Also great sponsor of ours, Tease Creations, custom apparel now out with their holiday line. But if you got something custom in mind that you want, they can help you out with it too. They're a, uh, available at teescreations22.com and Tease Creations by Allied Apparel on Facebook and on TikTok at Tease Creations. Have you guys got anything going interesting on Tease Creations TikTok in the next week, Rick Diesel? Well, she's been talking about the possibility of doing some live stuff here coming up, but she's had a big, a, a good weekend of, of Tumblr sales out of the blue this weekend. I don't know what happened with that, but really. Yeah, it's weird. So, but anyway, check them out. Tease Creations 22.com. Great website. That's where I got harvested all these pictures from. And you can see they do the tumblers. They do t-shirts, sweatshirts, hoodies. Hey, and they can probably accommodate just about any need you have. So just get on the get online and you can send them a message. And, oh, uh, and by the way, they did not get caught up in the copyright sweep. That happened about a week or so ago on TikTok. Oh, yeah. I saw people talking about that on TikTok. Yeah, that was a big bag. Yeah. Uh, these creations did not get caught up in that. Well, that's good. I'll ask you more about it as soon as I tell the people this. If you want to advertise with us, you can do it for only $10 a month for a read, just like you got there. Uh, you know, it's the cheapest advertising in wrestling that I know of. We're putting a headlock on high advertising prices. If you just want to advertise for a week or something, want us to promote your show, we can do that. Or if you do taxes, you know, tax season's cut. Nobody wants to think about this yet, but you know, the, hey, once the holidays are over, those bills are going to come in. And it's going to be tax time again. So I will get ready for it now. If you do a ta yeah. tax service or something like that, uh, we'll be glad to get your read on during tax season. 10 bucks a month. You get four reads. If we take a week off, that doesn't affect you one bit. You get four reads for $10. So don't worry about that. If we don't pull stunts like that. Not at all. You'll get four reads for $10. If you want us to produce a video commercial, we can do that, do that too. Those run you 30 bucks a month. But that's that's it. This is cheapest advertising in pro wrestling. That's for sure. Um, so, so the TikTok copyright thing. You guys were just talking about that. Um, explain to me. What it, so they finally cracked down on people using copyrighted music on TikTok? No, not music, uh -uh. t shirts, tumblers, like copyright, like Disney. Uh, oh, pictures. yeah, people would take Disney and copyrighted images and put on t shirts and tumblers and coffee cups and hats and sell them on TikTok. And they had a big sweep. I Tris was telling me about it, about a week or so ago that I mean, they just flat shut down hundreds of them well yeah. i would love to know if, if where the bulk of those accounts were were they in the know. united states or are they in china because the chinese and call me racist if you want to fuck you because i'm not but the chinese are well known for stealing uh -huh. software and copyrighted stuff from other countries especially the united states um they're Trying to build. They stole the, noodles from the Italians, didn't they? They. <laughs> I don't <laughs> you know. You know, I don't know about that. I don't know who had spaghetti first. I. You know what? I think I saw something on YouTube one time saying that noodles actually were invented by the Chinese. That uh, I have to. I have to look. I guess that it all up. depends on what form they was in. Well, yeah, I drive people crazy in the in the Philippines when they have the Asian noodles on a uh, on a plate, and I'll call it spaghetti, and it just makes uh -huh. me mad as hell. <laughs> I do. One of my favorite noodle dishes is panset, though. Yeah, man, panset's <laughs> awesome, man. Mm -hmm. Yes, and it, it, I thought it, that was a Christmas flower. That's poinsettia. Yeah, you think? Oh, okay. <laughs> You know, I tried to keep one of those things all year to see if I could get it once it turned green and see if it would turn red again, and it, it don't work. I can't have them in my house because I have cats. They're poisonous to cats. Yeah. Yeah. They, they turn, oh, aren't they? Never yeah. mind. I'm, I am 
I am I am spreading incorrect rumors well, about I had, oh. I had heard that too. I had heard misinformation it years. And then uh last year I, I had I can't remember where I heard it from, but like they they might make their stomach upset a little bit, but they're they're not poisonous. No. Oh yeah, I always well, thought that's they were wrong. Poisonous. I thought they I'm were wrong. Poisonous. I admit I'm wrong. I always thought um that they were poisonous to everything, you know. So mm -hmm. um, but evidently yeah. not. Well, and they also you're talking about the blooming, they they bloom depending on how much sunlight and dark they get that determines on when they bloom. Mm. Did yeah. you raise those when you had a greenhouse? I I, I never could figure it out. No. No, you, I, it, but I was told that if if you have more light in your greenhouse at night than what you can read a newspaper by, it'll affect the when they bloom. That's yeah, interesting. you have to keep them. I read on Google. You have to like keep them in dark for so long to get them. To yeah, for so many hours. You have to have so many hours of sunlight and so many hours of darkness for them to bloom on time. Yeah, crazy. But anyway, mine ended up getting invaded by some kind of little tiny white bugs, and they white just, flies. Did they fly around when you shook it? Yeah. Yeah, white flies. And they ate they it love up. Them. They ate it up, man. I, and I kept it for months on the screened-in back porch. And it was doing just fine. It was getting bigger. We were watering it. And uh, all of a sudden, one day in September, them white flies showed up, and they just ate it up. Man, it ended up in a trash can a couple of days later. Broke my heart. I swore I'd grow, never grow another plant again. Poinsettias and mums. White flies love them, boy. Yeah, we've had pretty good good luck with a palm tree um, that we bought years ago, and and that bastard is doing great. And it doesn't have coconut; it's not a big coconut tree or anything, and it's not quite a palmetto. But anyway, why are we talking about plants? I have no idea. I don't know. I don't know how this have eleven people watching. We hey. have a lot of people watch us right now. So. Hey, okay. Well, let's talk. About <laughs> <laughs> let's talk about the survivor series last night um it was i don't know has is reagan you said you saw it rick diesel have you seen it yet i have not but uh i've seen bits and pieces look at this this is the old rosemont right can you guys see the screen yes yeah this all right th these photos are courtesy of wwe.com as you can see right there on my cursor it says wwe photos so <clears throat> i love their photo galleries i wish they'd put them up for raw and smackdown Put more photos up for those, but they don't. I like that light, the lights. Yeah, it was beautifully lit. And look, look over here. See, no, no big tall entrance way, right? They just walked out of the back right down the aisle. They had that lit up because they sold all these tickets up here. That place was full last night. And, and it, it, they've been doing that for a while. Have they had some other shows where they just been not using the stage, like some of their big shows? Yeah, the one in Puerto Rico they did, and the uh I think it was SummerSlam they did. I kind of like the 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 entranceway with the screens. Mm -hmm. um, I think it looks real nice and stuff. Also, this is the first WWE pay-per-view I've watched, and I don't know how long. I also like the broadcast of the 3D-looking, like, things there in the entrances. The graphics, yeah. Yeah, the graphics. Mm -hmm. um, those were cool-looking, too. Yeah, they just started doing those during the pandemic, so they're fairly new. So that tells me that you hadn't watched the WWE pay per view in at least three years. No, I have not, and, and <laughs> I have not. So this is my first one in three years. Yep, and um, and you picked a good one because I, I tell you what, it I, I'm always a little nervous when I see a card with only four or five matches on it, because if you've ever watched the original Survivor Series from 1987, ooh, um, <laughs> no. That uh, women's match and that tag team's match was, ooh, uh, anyway. But the, look, the place was packed out. And this is the old Rosemont Horizon. They call it the All-State Arena. So trivia question. Uh, what famous event at WrestleMania happened in that building in the 80s? Hogan Piper? I don't know. No, no guesses? Okay. It was the big NFL WWF Battle Royal. Uh, at WrestleMania 2 that Andre the Giant won hmm. happened in that building. So <laughs> building with a lot of history. All you right. Know, you know what we should do? I, I think we should have a trivia night on here where Matt, where we get get people, fans, they can just answer in the thing, but have a live trivia of wrestling trivia. 
Yeah, the only thing about doing trivia though is everybody's got a Google machine now, and so the uh, answer your question. You have to put a time thing. limit on the answers, I guess. Yeah, be fun if you can figure it out how to do it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, do like trivia. So here's team number one for the women's war games. It's Becky Lynch, Charlotte Flair, Shotzi, and Bianca Belair. Nobody knew if they were going to have, uh, if Charlotte and Becky were going to be able to get along in this match, but we would find out soon. Bianca, Bianca, if you'll notice, has got her hair in two braids. Now she's a Tennessee girl. So I am convinced that when Dutch Mantell (laughs) retired, he let her have shoe baby. And that bull whip is in both of these braids because when she hits people with them it looks like it really hurts them yeah so, i was wondering the same thing because she was she was hitting them and it was it sounded like a bull rope so i was wondering what was in it yeah that's not real hair she she used to like get it to wrap around people's ankles and pull their uh ankles out from under them like people used to do with bull whip when she was in nxt um but anyway here are the ladies on the uh, other side of the team bailey's bunch uh God, why does their name escape? Damage, damage control. Damage, damage control, yeah. Yep, and they all came out wearing their Oscar masks. And Bailey and Becky started, and Reagan, you know, you've seen it. This proceeded to be one of the craziest brawls I have ever seen. Poor Shotzi fell on her head not long into it. Uh, did you see that where she fell right on her head? Yeah, because she went through? for like a spear through the ropes, right? And yeah. landed funny. Yeah, I saw and that. Hit the metal between the rings. Which yeah, I still- because that's something I found interesting that they had that that metal metal piece keep you know attaching the rings together because you know back in the day you just had you just had the the space and sometimes you would end up with somebody shaking in between. Yeah, yeah, um, you you could step in the hole. Remember they put Arn Anderson's hole head in that uh, head in that hole on purpose one time. Yeah. I can't remember which war this games was, that was. This was the only thing that I thought was kind of contrived the the kendo stick thing here Mm -hmm. because my issue was you know whoever that was put it in there oh that was dakota kai she's she didn't hold on to it and it just kind of sat there until becky got it Mm -hmm. that was my only thing that was like that's kind of i don't know but i'm very picky so don't take anything oh, no you're not you watch that crappy awa shit from way back in the day you're not i complain <laughs> about it i complain about it <laughs> you shouldn't even watch it it, it kills brain cells oh. speaking of killing skin cells eos guy with the chain they got chains involved in this and and, and cornet hates the um fact that they bring weapons into the war games matches but you can't bleed you know blood is not allowed if you get a gusher you know you get raked in the fence or whatever they're going to make you roll over to the side and have they have cut people at ringside just like a boxing and ufc and you can't continue in the match until you get that cut sealed up becky lynch found that out last night and so you know the weapons are a trade-off to me you know if kane have the blood and the guts you don't want that you get the weapons i mean what do you guys think i agree yeah, I was really shocked about how they let her put the chain around people's necks. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, that was that was interesting. Um, you know, it was it was an okay match. I mean, it was I mean, they put I mean, they put like their bodies on the line and they were they were they were really hitting each other with those kendo sticks really hard. They were throwing live they, ra- especially yeah. those kicks. Yeah, and, and, and um, Ky- Kyrie Sane is still doing that spinning back punch at like uh, light speed, and there's no way you can be prepared for that coming. That's like, uh, you know, after you feel the knuckles, you know, crack your orbital socket, you're like, oh, she must have done that uh, spinning punch. <laughs> you know, and and the, was it? Car- I don't remember what. I don't know if it's Carrie Sane or Eoni Sky because I I don't know him well enough. When she put that garbage can on her body and jumped off the top, that was that was something else. But then I was talking to Brian. I was like, it it was very spectacular looking. But then I was like, if we were looking at this on an indie show, would we say this is cool or would we say that person's stupid? Do you know what I'm uh, saying? I would. Only thing that I that that drives me crazy about stuff like that, and we're going to show that in here in a second. This right here looked like to me, I don't know how old Kari Sane is. I've never looked it up, 
but she hit this elbow drop and she got a lot of chair to the right hip when she connected. She did and because it, it was like they fell off a of Shotzi and she <laughs> she landed on them. So yeah, it's like, it's like Shotzi was trying to get away. I think it might have worked better if Io would have held her down. Yeah, I know. Uh, but it was good. This is the first. I mean, I'm to be honest, I have not watched pay per view from them in like at least three years, and so. It, it's really refreshing to see that the women themselves get a war games match. Like I oh, find wow. that, and I know it's something that's not new, but I'm just oh. saying in the grand scheme of things, it, it's a, it's, it's wonderful. I really enjoyed it for, for women's wrestling and, and, you know, well, you, you got, this is a, they experimented with the women's war games match and the war games match with men on NXT before they brought it up to the main roster at survivor series last year. And I can tell you, uh, they've had to finagle with the rules a little bit because they did, they didn't want it ending just on submission because, you know, it's common belief around the wrestling business amongst a lot of people that the submission ending is kind of flat. And I didn't know what I thought about that at first, but now that I've seen them, that you can end them on pinfalls now, I kind of like this way a little bit better. You know, I know why mm -hmm. Dusty did what he did, but I kind of like this a little bit better. Uh, let's see. Yeah, a lot of chair shots. They used Bianca's hair against her. And then, you know, with the help of her old tag team partner, Dakota Kai, who is out with an injury right now, but she'll be back. Uh what they've been tag team champions got an nxt wwe women's tag team champions helped her rig that trash can to chain and pull it up to the top of the cage and then there's an advertisement it, then it happened <laughs> look at this picture this was crazy this she's actually done this before in nxt but the crowd was only a third of the size of this that saw it and i just and you can tell a lot of them hadn't seen it before look at these faces if you look through the crowd mm -hmm. at that moment and, and I got to give her credit. That's pretty gutsy, Brian. I mean, you can kind of look down, you know, your body and get a general idea of where everybody is, but you really are jumping off the top of the cage blind. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much. And there it is. That's where she jumped off. The only thing is it took, took a little bit long, but I say that, but she's like, a five foot woman jumping off a 15 foot high steel cage with, uh, with a trash can blocking her vision. <laughs> so, you know, she had to make sure she got a yeah. measure right and it worked, but it hurt everybody, you know? And so, and then Charlotte, of course, wasn't, you know, she wasn't going to let that be the big moment of the night. She had to try the moonsault. She said the same in a press conference and, uh, and then they just kept fighting and fighting and Bailey saved the day two or three times. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. When uh, Bianca's team got the advantage, Bailey came in and saved him. Probably made three saves. And there's an insane elbow that Kyrie Sane does, and it is insane. Uh, I, I even think Randy Savage would look at that and be like, uh -uh, "No way, brother!" Because <laughs> um, she, yeah, that, that little girl's crazy. This was, I think. Pretty vicious right here. I've never seen this. Bianca held Oscar up like an old road warrior doomsday device and shots. He just dropped kicked her right in the face. Mm -hmm. And if you look, look at if you can see Charles Robinson's face, like, oh my God. Yeah, it was gnarly. And uh, even my wife was into this. And then they chained up Bianca and Becky in the middle of the ring, which was, yeah, I was, I was surprised and shocked by this too, Reagan, but. You know, uh, Triple H is in charge now. Things are going to change. Which is good. I mean, I, I thought, I mean, it's, you know. It was brutal. And look, B Bianca just, let, that's the face of somebody who knows that they're fucked. <laughs> <laughs> you know. <laughs> uh, and my, Asuka nailed uh, Shotzi with the mist. And that would come back to bite her soon. And then they used the trash can a little bit more. And then Oscar tried to miss them, use the mist again. And uh, we learned last night, and who, kn who knew? For all these years, Muda terrorized everybody with mist, and so did um, Tajiri. And, oh, and I saw Tajiri last night. And uh, let's see, who else used it? Kabuki was the first one yeah. I think I saw use it. Yeah. But who knows? You can stop the mist with a blast to the face <laughs> from a fire extinguisher. And, I guess that uh, kind of makes sense, but... 
I well, like- you know, you can pretty much stop anybody, even if they're not using mist. You spray them in the face with a fire extinguisher, they'll stop. Mm. Uh, <laughs> so I do like that she uses purple. Yeah, I don't know if she uses purple all the time, but she does. It's blue, a blue or purple, but I'm I'm a little bit colorblind, so it looks blue to me. But um, but yeah, that's what color she uses. She used green at first, but then uh, she switched here recently. EO or- got her. <laughs> I know we're having this conversation last night when we were watching Tajiri. And uh, we're, you know, it's very hard now to get lemon lime Kool Aid. <laughs> and so I don't know if that's what they use, you know, n- you know, kind of breaking the, the, you know, well, I don't the wrestling know. rule, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, but it's just, it, I, I just wonder if that's why everybody's is a different color. <laughs> It might be, but I've seen like one night I was watching SmackDown and I guess the director messed up and caught we caught a glimpse of Oscar loading the mist and it was a cube. I don't know if you can see me on screen. Yeah. But it, it was a cube about that big, about this big, about like that. And um it looked like a it looked like a big cough drop, a big square Vix cough drop. Right. And I saw her load it with two fingers in the side of her mouth like dip. And so I don't know what that what it is. But yeah, it, I'm sure the WWE can afford to get something that looks good. I'm just saying in general, like for other people that use mist, but you know, she's really, you know, she's she's an excellent, like she does it very well, you know. She, well, she grew up loving idolizing the great Muda. So, you know, it's just it was only a matter of time before it was going to become part of her game. But poor Bailey, after she made all those saves, all of her teammates were down. She got start, started getting hit with finishers first, Charlotte, then Bianca. And then Becky gave her the uh, exploder suplex through the table. One, two, three. And that was all she wrote. Um, and Becky was very dejected in the back. Uh, there was an interview on WWE.com that I ran across today and, she actually said, I don't know what's in my future. So I don't know if Becky's thinking about going away for a while or what, but she did not. Uh, I mean, not Becky Bailey. Uh, I don't know if Bailey's thinking away about uh, thinking about going away for a while or what, but there are the spoils of victory f- for the girls in this year's war games match. So congratulations to them. I always, I was pulling for Bailey's bunch cause I got a soft spot for people on that team, but yeah, yeah. It is what it is. So thoughts, women's war games match. I, I loved it. It kept the attention of my wife, which is always makes my eyebrows, you know, go up and my antennas. Like if this is good, good enough that somebody who's not a diehard likes it, then there's some something there. It's like Cornette always talks about, you know, you can always gauge how strong the business is by how many girls you've got in the crowd. You know, and when you see a lot of girls in the crowd, that's always a good sign. You know, young teenagers, 20 something single women coming, you know, you got something special. So I don't know. What do you think? Opinions? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I thought it was entertaining. I thought they did a good job. Yeah. Uh, yeah I was, I, you know, it was, it's just something that, that it's just, been years and years and years in the making to finally allow women to showcase themselves in in such a way and to be so brutal you know and you know yeah i I would say like i said i didn't get to the men's war games yet but i think the best match of the night was rhea ripley and um god what's her name zoe stark zoe stark Mm -hmm. that was the best match of the night you think so yes i would that was better than the gunther match I, i it was better than the Escobar um dragon match. Like I thought that match was the best match that I saw before I got to the men's war games. Like I I saw more happening in that match than I did with the with Escobar. Is it little what is little it's dragon, but I Dragon Lee. Dragon, He's Lee. He's dragon Lee. Lee. Yeah. Yeah. He just was, came up from NXT, yeah. as a matter of fact. I was expecting more from that match, considering they were discussing heavily that that um, Escobar was a luchador and, you know, I didn't see any, I didn't see much luchadorness <laughs> um, in the match. And, no. and that was kind of disappointing for me. 
um, you know, I'm a, I'm a huge fan of, of, uh, their weight class, you know, to say weight class, um, and, and of Lucha Libre. And so I was really looking forward to seeing that. Um, and I just, well, let's br bring it back to what we got on the screen. We'll look at the pictures oh, yeah. of that. But the reason I'm saying that is because this girl, Zoe, is like Zoe Stark. Yep. Zoe Stark is fantastic. <laughs> the moves she was doing, um, her her rope, you know, coming off the ropes and everything was just. She is. I just. I'm very interested in watching her because she's. Is she a relatively newcomer? Not to NXT, but to the main roster, yes. She came up to the main roster while Trish was back during the summer and sat under her learning tree for a while. And to me, I've seen Zoe wrestle a bunch of times, so I'm kind of used to her by now. To me, it seemed like she was a little nervous last night. And you're going against you're going up for a belt. I mean, you're going up. Yeah, to exactly. And and in front of a bigger crowd than she's probably ever ever worked in front of, you know, with a lot of pressure. Because, I mean, let's face it, man, The even though Rhea Ripley is a rule breaker, a bad guy, whatever, the people really dig her, and they uh -huh. usually cheer yeah. her anyway. So you are, you've got a huge mountain to climb. Not only is she the biggest girl in WWE next to, like, Nia Jax or somebody, but I'm talking about yeah, – I, I don't know how to, how to say it without – I'll say it. She, she is a muscular – she's a very – in shape, muscular woman. Yeah, yeah. I'll say it. <laughs> I'll um, say it because I'm the woman on the panel, and I've never seen Rhea Ripley wrestle either. Oh so my! She is. She is. Oh yeah. She is fantastic. Also, like both of these women are like, you know, just great wrestlers. Like, just even just take the woman part out of it. Let's take. They let's... are some of the greatest wrestlers I've seen recently. Let's take. Uh, let's go ahead and reset our timestamp, guys. For Reagan, uh, hadn't seen Rhea Ripley wrestle, so that would push us up to about four, four and a half years. Now. <laughs> <laughs> so, hey, I'm, I have been very honest. Yes, I'm, I appreciate that. No, but I'm glad you're back because you have come back at a good time, Vince. Like right at the end of Vince's tenure, before he got in all that trouble. Um. It it's it, it, some of the things that were going on on Raw and SmackDown were so ridiculous. It was so frustrating for me the way they were using some of these people. And this is not a knock against Vince McMahon, but dude is what in his eighties now. You know, mm -hmm. step aside. You know, on the creative end at least, just let, well, some, let somebody I, else do it. I completely agree, and you know that's also not that Jim Cornette does shows like you know he's not a promoter or owner or anything. But that's one of my. He issues wasn't in the nineties either. Yeah, <laughs> but see, like the thing is, is like he'll be complaining about something about, hey, this looks like a joke, da, da, da. and and I'm like, yeah. Do you remember um, Prince Prince? Uh, what is it? Prince Kali, Prince the Mummy, Harris, Prince Karis. Prince, Prince, yeah, the three thousand year old mummy that Bob Cottle refused to put over, <laughs> refused to say he was three thousand years old. But Dutch Mantel was like, you know, he's three thousand years old, and Bob Cottle's like, yeah, that's what they say. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Cornette did apologize on his podcast for that, though. You yeah, know, but I'm I saying, but that's what I'm saying is like, I'm I have watched Smoky Mountain now almost the entire thing and some of his ideas were stupid too yes they were you know, don't forget that your ideas weren't great either but Rhea Ripley like I'm just she she is yeah she and I was that's my that of the whole show that I watched so far that was my favorite match yeah you're you you just don't have a I think the reason I was seeing stuff in that match that maybe not everybody was seeing is because I've watched them both so much and it's like you're looking at it with a more critical eye, and uh, and Chris Severn and I were texting back and forth, and he was like, "I think he saw some of the same things I did. I'm not sure because he sent me a message that said something like, "Who boy, they got through that," and I was like, "Well, I don't think it was that bad. I mean, I saw a couple of things they slipped, you know, like somebody slipped on a banana peel. Well, okay, well, but then it's a I'll, huge I'll title match, though. Like you said, you, you're." on a huge pay-per-view and the biggest match of your career against Rhea fucking Ripley. 
who wouldn't have butterflies the size of eagles going to the ring? I mean, you know, scary. Well, to break the veil of suspended disbelief, the one of the reasons that I liked it was unlike all the other matches, I couldn't see them calling it in the ring. Mm. Like, that's one thing I noticed really bad in the war games with the women. It was like watching Sid Vicious call that war games of his. <laughs> and it was pretty bad in some parts. Like, pretty bad. And I was like, good Lord. You would hear them talking to each other. You would see them doing this. You know, you were... I mean, and maybe it's because I know what things look like, but I was... That was my one my one complaint with that war games match with the women is like, I don't know if it's because the camera was in there with them and such a, such a sensitive mic, but there were so many times I'm like, yeah, yeah, they're, they're, they're calling it. They're talking to each other. Mm. And I did not see that in the Rhea Ripley match. Yeah. 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 Yes. I saw that too. All right. Sorry. So here, <laughs> I tried to be nice. Here's, here's a, yeah. I mean, it is what it is. Here's the match we were all uh, we were just talking about: it was Santos Escobar against Dragon Lee. Dragon Lee, of course, was substituting for Carlito, who was injured. And I'm gonna tell you what, man, Santos Escobar has got some genuine heat with the fans. A couple of weeks ago on SmackDown, he said that he hoped Rey Mysterio's surgery didn't go well, that he got an infection and could never wrestle again. Uh, so which which led to Michael Cole saying. Come on, somebody turn his damn microphone off. And and the audience uh, that night on SmackDown really started booing him. But at this point in that match last night, when he tried to rip that mask off, the Chicago audience turned. Did you hear them? Mm -hmm. oh, they yeah. started booing him out of the fucking building, man. Mm -hmm. It was incredible. And, uh, and I'm not saying these guys weren't great. I mean, they, they are technically sound wrestlers. I was just expecting more. Well, All the pictures make it look like they had stuff. More stuff happened. Okay, so I'm gonna tell you my one problem with this match, and it was the ending. Um. So. Um. Um. <laughs> God. What? 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 That picture caught it, didn't it? What are you talking about? Oh yes, it is. Did. Did. Oh yeah, it did. Did it? Oh, oh my lord. <laughs> Tell you why this match? Let me tell you why this match disappointed me the most. I wasn't even posted that on the freaking internet. Um, Escobar was in kind of like a tree of woe, and then he was holding himself up by the ropes, and then that. um, dragon. Yes, well, he held on for like I don't know a minute or two. Yeah, and I'm like, just and 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 he does this like curb stomp esque move, and I'm just like, just let go. Just let go. Because yeah. he was there so long. I was like, just let go and he's gonna and his feet are, and his feet are not even hooked. Yeah. Yeah. And and that's that's the only thing I'm seeing is I hear all this, and I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna tell you my criticism. You hear all the time about how every setup for an AIW, I'm sorry, AEW, <laughs> sorry, an AEW big spot is people waiting around. For them to do I it. I saw that three or four times in the women's war, war games <laughs> match. I saw it in this match of people just waiting for them to hit their big spot. Yeah. And I hear people complain all the time about AEW and how AEW does that when I saw the same thing with WWE. That's yeah. a cancer in this business now. Well, it, w, the reason WWE, I see it too. I just don't say anything about it because it, it's it, AEW uh, people, the AEW, um, uh, what do you call people? The AEW cult-like people on Twitter mm -hmm. are, are a lot more fun to troll because they get mad so quickly. Yeah. <laughs> and, and so you point a little thing like that out. I will say this, <laughs> WWE is better at concealing it from the TV audience. But if you go there, it doesn't happen as much in WWE, but you'll be sitting there at a live show sometimes like, I'll be like, well, God damn, is he just going to stand there and wait on him? When I was, when we were watching aside. that match, I was like, just let go of the ropes. <laughs> yeah. and, but, that, but I'm going to tell you, we're going to watch AEW Wednesday also. So... Well, good uh -huh. luck. They're getting ready to start a, turn a round robin tournament that's going to have 33 matches in it. And it's probably going to go on until next summer. 
So well, I'm I'm picking a good place then, I guess. I guess <laughs> either something that you you're gonna either love it or regret it. But as long as it's not like the team challenge, we'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> now here's a here's a match that had a lot of interest for me, and I think are kind of for nostalgia purposes. The Miz, who's been around for God, I'm pushing 20 years now. Just about three, I think his rookie year was 06, maybe 05, 06. It might have been earlier than that. But uh, against Gunther, and uh, Gunther is the longest reigning Intercontinental Champion of all time. He broke Honky Tonk Man's record a couple of months ago. Uh, he is a wrestling machine. He says uh, he he calls it professional wrestling. He doesn't use the term sports entertainment. He says people like the Miz. They come out and do comedy routines or an insult to the business. And he <laughs> views the ring as a sacred place. So he says all the kind of stuff that makes old guys like me like him. Yeah. Uh, and, um, and, but in the Miz, uh, he and the Miz have had a good build up to this over since really Halloween. And, uh, that I, I didn't think the match was, you know, not like, four or five stars but certainly a tolerable match and i enjoyed it um it wasn't an instant classic uh because everybody thinks back if you want to see a a a gunther match it'll knock your damn socks off go on your peacock and find clash at the castle and look at the match he had with sheamus and i'm telling you buddy that it that will Make it, Brian, Rick Diesel, Reagan. It, I bet you all when you're sitting there watching it, you'd be like, "Yeah, I'm glad I retired." You know, because I mean, it's painful to watch. Uh, but this, like I, I seen that. Is that the, is that to be? Is that the one where they chopping each other so much? Yeah, and they, yeah, yeah. Right, they were both bleeding from the chest. Um, yeah, <laughs> it was it was rough. But Miz, as you can see, he, he caught the business end of one of those overhand chops last night. I didn't find anything wrong with this match. I thought it was entertaining. Hmm. Uh, the whole deal with the turnbuckle pad and Miz looking like he was going to win it. But in the end, uh, Gunther came out on top as usual. And he is still your intercontinental champion. Longest intercontinental, longest reigning intercontinental champion of all time. There's your man, Gunther. What'd you think of that match? Yeah, I, I it was... Yeah, like like you said, there was nothing wrong with it, mm-hmm. and uh, I, I liked uh, how snugly they were working. I mean, you you could see like the the size of Gunter's head was was bright red. His both the chests were red, so I mean they they were really laying into each other, <laughs> and um, and I, I think they they were pretty much telling the story that they needed to tell. And in order to do that, it wasn't maybe as exciting as it could be. But sometimes that's just not what the that's not what the match calls for. Mm-hmm. Sometimes it calls for a uh, you know for a for a slower paced uh, kind of a match. But yeah, I, I was I w- I was very impressed uh, uh, with Gunter in in, in that match. It's the first full match that I that I had seen of him, and yeah, he's just all business. And <laughs> Reagan was like, he he looks he looks old. Yeah, but he's not. He's right, not. he's in his twenties. Yeah, but I was like, I was like, well, he looks like a throwback. And she's like, yeah, but he also looks old. And I'm like, yeah, like a throwback <laughs> back in the twenties. <laughs> like somebody, it's like you look at somebody. It's like you, you spent are they, him to are they it, 19 yeah. or are they 55? I can't tell. Yeah. You, you expect him to, to have a promo picture like this? Yeah, yeah. or the old, or the old one, you know, like like ah, you know. Yeah. And I do. I love his look. Like I love that kind of. You know, I I love a flashy character, and I love a character that's like all business, you know, and, and it's just there to kick ass and and keep his belt and and things like that. So yeah, I, I that match was, and that's the other thing is um, that I really thought was great for all the matches is how hard hitting they are. Oh yeah, like, that, that's WWE are, now. Yeah, yeah, and I just think about in the past you know, when they were not hard hitting, 
And and I really appreciate that fact that 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 they are that yeah that they're doing that. I'd say. Well, well you got Shawn Michaels running the uh, the training center. You know who he he came up in the in, in the end of the territory days, and you got Triple H running the company pretty much now, and his idol was Ric Flair. You know so. Yeah, they. I think they got an old school mindset that they're teaching these kids when they come in now. And you better be. They asked Triple H about Jade Cargill at the press conference after the show last night, and he's like, uh, "Well, we want to make sure that before we put out there, there's no curveballs that she won't be able to hit," which is telling me they're ha having to to whatever she learned in AEW, how little they're having to retrain her. You know, they'll have to. Yeah, but and. I and I agree. You gotta retrain I her mind too. Yeah, but they get it right. And I agree that a lot of the. I'm trying to think how to say this. Like, a lot of times when you have this, and I like a, I like this kind of wrestling if it's done well. A lot of time when this Arab, I don't know what you'd call it, like aerobatic wrestling, acrobatic I, wrestling. You know what I'm talking about, like. Yeah, tumble routine. Yeah, it's like it is. And that was why I did not like Ring of Honor 15 years ago because I felt like everything they did was a dance. Yeah, it did and, look like that back then. You're right. And and that, we, and what was the other one? Was Ring of Honor the one that was on HD net back in the day? I don't I think remember. it was. I think it was. I don't remember where we watched it because I mean, this was like when Ring of Honor was first really getting on TV and people were watching it and we would, we would turn it on and we would say, it's like watching a dance routine. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I, and like I said before, I'm a huge fan of Lucha Libre. Lucha Libre is that kind of wrestling done well. And I've seen matches that, that have those and would have those big high spots and stuff. But some of those matches, it's just like, Get me in, do my high spot. Get me in, do my high spot. Get me in, do my high spot. Dun, 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 dun. And it's not hard hitting. It's not fun to watch. So that's one of the reasons I really appreciate that I'm seeing. And I think AEW sometimes has that issue is that sometimes it does look like a dance on some things. But well, the, not. the inmates are running the asylum at AEW. That's all I can say about that. You know, I mean, just well, we'll, of... yeah. I wonder if it's a, I wonder if it's true that um, the um, I don't know if this is a work or something true about the um, God, what is my wrong? The young bucks. The young bucks are stepping away for a while. They should. They run off CM Best Punk. Best thing that can happen down there. Yes, they, they need to be gone from there. But I'm gonna tell you though. I I don't know if you want to get there yet, yet, but I was I was shocked on that TikTok with that. Uh, so well, when I we'll, saw the ending of the show, yeah, we'll get there. Uh, so this picture is telling to me because <laughs> look at it: JD McDonough, Finn Balor, Damian Priest, all eyeballing Drew McIntyre because they're not sure if he's with it. Dominic looks like he's the only one that's focused on the match. He's looking toward the ring. Yeah, I, because I have not watched this product in many, 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 many years. What's the deal with Dominic's belt? That's the North American title. It's for so what is that? Like, if you were to equate that to my old brain, what would that be? Would that be like a junior heavyweight? No, it would be a mid card champion in NXT. Yeah, so okay. Like, yeah, like a US or uh, or a television title. Okay. In NXT. They brought okay. it back as a tribute to Mid South because you know their top title was the North American title. And, okay. Oh and, yeah, it was. And so, um, again, another thing that had made me very happy. They did that. I think they brought them back the North American title maybe five, six years ago. Somebody out there in the comments section, correct me if I'm wrong. But I was glad to see it come back. Uh, let's see. So there, Finn goes in first. He's got the most experience. And then uh, Cody's team comes out. And they send Seth to the ring first because he's got the most experience and he's the world champion. So, and, you know, Seth Rollins is kind of like similar to Bret Hart in, in the 
early to mid nineties. If you needed somebody to go out there and give you a good 20, 25 minute match every night, you know, that, here's your guy. So him and Finn have a history together. They feuded a bunch over the last five, six years. So this was perfect way. So, and, and, and uh, let me just tell you, um, Finn, uh, that still kind of does it justice, but kind of doesn't do it, do it justice is at the speed and velocity he got to that position. <laughs> Uh, and then um, ju Judgment Day had the advantage, so McDonough went in second. They proceeded to, you know, beat the fire out of Seth until Jay Uso came in, even it up. More fighting. Got they got really violent too. Uh, and who's that? Is that Priest in their third? It looks like yeah. Damian Priest is a sensational wrestler, big guy, big booming voice. Although uh, my, one of my coworkers uh, that's from Puerto Rico says that when Priest speaks Spanish, it sounds like a homeless person gibberish. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so then Cody was in, and remember this: this unlike the women's, this had each uh, team had five members this time, and uh, oh, oh, that was. Yeah, that that was rough to watch right there. Did you see the uh uh I think it's I don't know if you call it a bull rope. Yeah, that's pretty much it's from a you know, bull rope match and yeah, they uh gave Balor all kinds of burn. That was impressive right there. The triple choke slam looked pretty good. Tables got busted. Rhea was at ringside with the money in the bank. That's an odd look. Randy Orton made his return. They didn't see him before the match. And Randy looks like he's put on some weight. When you guys see the video, tell me if you think he's got himself jacked up about 15, 20 pounds of night of lean muscle. He's not fat by any stretch of the imagination. But Randy came in there and just proceeded to clean house, do all his old Randy Orton moves. The crowd was going absolutely bonkers. See him squaring off with Drew McIntyre there and then Cody's team got the advantage. Uh, and, oh, yeah, this I remember this now. I'd had a few cocktails by the time we got to this point in the show last night. Randy Orton hit the big RKO. And, uh, yeah, one, two, three. And there are your victors. Jey Uso, Sami Zayn, Randy, Seth, Cody Rhodes. Won the whole shooting match there. So, uh, and I know you guys hadn't watched it yet but then after that the music hit caught the personality and cm punk walked out the place was already going crazy if you hadn't seen it yet and cm punk came out and did his whole it's clobbering time thing and uh it basically fellowshiped with the fans i don't know any other way to put it the place went absolutely nuts the rosebond horizon right after it was built collapsed due to a structural uh some structure integrity issues with it and i honestly was worried about that wooden roof in there last night the fact that it might come down again uh, because cm punk got a hell of a, a reception he didn't do anything uh but when seth rollins saw him after the show went off the air it's been all over social media today he went out of his mind started flipping the bird telling him fuck you and uh all this other jazz that was filmed by the fans at ringside and so i'm looking at Man, I hope they drop him and see him and see him punk and Seth Rollins into a feud for the world title. Let's go with it. Have the first match at the Royal Rumble. Let's go. I mean, that would be an awesome feud because they can both talk and they can both go in the ring. So and I'm what I'm hoping because I mean CM Punk is an excellent wrestler. I mean, mm -hmm. nobody is disputing that. He is he is one of the best. You know, and I'm hoping a bigger company that's run by stronger people can work with him better. Mm -hmm. To put it in a very nice, politically correct way, I think the 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 people that run that business are strong. They know what they want, and and maybe can work with him. And won't have to put up with no passive aggressive bullshit from other wrestlers that don't like him, you know, because they just don't they won't put up with that shit in WWE. Uh let's see. Well, does he come does he come with every show that's run in Chicago? I mean, it sure we seems like run it, a that's... show, could we get him to debut for us? <laughs> yeah, if we get like, you run Chicago, you automatically get CM Punk on the card. I mean, it's, you know, it's, yeah. like it's part of the <laughs> yeah. contract. 
I know. I know. He's had so many debuts in Chicago I over the know. last few years. He's debuted in two different companies there twice this year. Yeah. Yeah. Well, see, remember he originally debuted for AEW on their Friday in night Chicago. show in Chicago, and then he got hurt. And when he came back from that injury, he, he debuted again for him in Chicago. Um, debuted at Collision in Chicago. Yeah. Got fired. Fire series Chicago. Yeah. I, I, mean, think, I think he might. Maybe his dad owns the building. <laughs> and, uh, if you're he's like, the- yeah, well, you know, if you're going to run my building, you got to put Punk on the card. Yeah, just, put Junior know. on the card here. It's like, yeah, them, it's like one of them promotions where they put their son as the heavyweight belt. Yeah. Uh, that no way. George, <laughs> that George, like a- George Goulas. Oh, man. If you had, if uh. you- You'd have a Nick and George Goulas reference at <laughs> 7 40 p.m. Well, was, in the game was, tonight. Drink now. I was thinking Eric Watts. And, oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Um, and then on the indie level, I was thinking Elden Spear. <laughs> so. uh, look up, look, if you really want to see some nepotism and something like that, Reagan, look up the name George Goulas. And uh, he was in Tennessee wrestling. His father, Nick, promoted the Nashville territory for many years and uh, was known for not paying well. And when his son got old enough to wrestle, putting a championship on him, which pretty much killed their territory. Uh, so, um, well, and the only Dutch ones that's ever done it right was the Von Eriks. Yeah. Yeah. They were successful but, with it. But I think it's because, I mean, because they were, they awesome. were good. They were right. Good. But you just think about like when AWA was on uh, ESPN, like they were pushing the hell out of Greg Ganya. Woo! And I would say he's worse than Eric Watts. Oh, wow. Okay. That's big talk right there. I don't know. Eric Watts, Eric Watts is pretty bad. <laughs> well, it was funny. Like one of the weirdest things. Did everybody happened. freeze? Am I dead? What happened? No. Okay. No, everything's still like everybody froze. Oh, yeah. There goes my internet connection is unstable. Uh, let's see. Uh, oh, well, we'll keep on trucking. Let me, uh, let me go ahead and move to our ads uh, real quick. And Matt's like, he's time jumping. Yeah. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm light speed jumping like Poe did in star Wars. I mean, I ain't that much of a geek. Uh, let's see. Come from current slide from current slide. No, oh, hang on. I'm having to take it going backwards. Yeah, I don't know why I did that. I had a I had a lawn care ad here. I it popped up there for about half a second. Yeah. All right. I've seen I think, bushes. I think I got it here. I think so. We should see bushes now. Do we see bushes? There they are. All right. All right. So um just want to tell you about our uh, our first sponsor, Branch Management. Um, I don't know that there's much they can help you do right now except get up leaves and do clean gutters. Yeah, they can clean the gutters for you if you need something pressure washed. Uh, you're probably gonna need to do it in the middle of the day because <laughs> it's getting pretty cold, at least here at night. Uh, pressure washing, general contracting, gutter cleaning, anything you need around lawn landscaping, they can help you out with, and they'll be glad to. It kind of blew through those slides, but the reason being is. There's some incorrect phone numbers on one of them, and I can't figure out how to get them off. So, uh, anyway, 336-648-2487, 336-648-2487. Best thing about branch management, they'll give you free estimates, free, free, free. And so everybody likes something for free. So they, uh, you, no matter how, how bad your shape uh, yard, how bad a shape your yard is in, branch management uh, will uh, – come out, look at it, and give you an estimate and, and for absolutely nothing. Now, to actually clean up that mess, there will be a fee involved, but they'll tell you how much the fee is going to be in advance for nothing. They'll come and take a look at it. 336-648-2487 and tell them AIWF Ringside Wrestling sent you. That's in the Mount Airy area. Tease Treats, our most delicious sponsor. Say it, great pizza, delicious dog, decadent desserts, great chicken tenders are serving pickles again. At least they were the last time I seen them. You can call 336-755-8204 for availability. And you can also find them on Facebook at Tease Treats. Rick Diesel, where's Tease Treats going to be this week? Back in Galax. We was in the, we was up at the Light Festival last night and uh, Friday night. We're going to be back up right during the day Saturday. Awesome. At the awesome. farmer's market. 
Very cool. It says big sell on cabbage. I do not know. Hey, it's that time of year, I guess. <laughs> I uh, if you're uh, doing something about Christmas, we'll be up there. How is that Saturday. light? How's that light show? It, it attracts a lot of people, I'd imagine. There was a lot of people there this weekend, yeah. and and it went really well. I mean, if if you like the, the way they do it up there, it's pretty cool. They you set your car and watch the lights flashing, mm -hmm. but you put your uh, radio on a. God, what is that station? I can't remember the station. But anyway, you put your radio, it tells you why you're up there. You put your radio on a station and it plays Christmas music and the lights flash in time with the music. Oh, that's pretty cool. On the radio, cool. which is really cool. Yeah, that's really cool. That's kind of the way they got it set up over here at the Speedway, too, as you drive through, you know, you, um, you, yeah, it on and the lights blinked in rhythm to the music. So, well, uh, William Bottomley is the, uh, the, the guy who, um, uh, spearheads that up there. I used to be on uh, one of the news channels in North Carolina around Winston Salem. It was a reporter, hmm. I think. Oh, okay. Yeah. Very nice. Well, those things attract a lot of money. I mean, you look at Tanglewood, I mean, $20 per car. We were up there on Thanksgiving. Great show again this year, as always. And they were saying, well, they always tell me saying no shit at Tanglewood. Well, they've been doing it for like 30 plus years, or this is the 30th, the 31st season this year and they mm -hmm. add to it a little every year anyways. we took a carriage ride this uh the day before thanksgiving through it it was that was fantastic too how much did that set you back i was just asking somebody about that the other day okay. well to dox myself it was uh, it was a 110 with in that includes the ride and entrance to the park and when you're done with the ride you can go ahead and drive through the whole thing so oh, wow. yeah, you don't do the carriage ride through the whole thing. The horse can't can't do the whole uh, the whole thing mm -hmm. uh, there and back. So they they take you about halfway, and then you turn around, and then you get in your car. But then that's good because you can then go and then uh, go to the uh, the red barn where they have the the s'mores and the and the the gift shop. And all yeah. that. Yeah, I thought it was well worth it. Yeah. My children loved it. Yeah. So. All right. So again, that, thing, you have to make sure to uh call early. Like get September. A, yeah. <laughs> That's early. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They said they start taking reservations in September, call in September. And wow. we did. We finally got in. We had been wanting to do it for years. And we just every time we called, they they were already Looked up, and we asked somebody in the in the shop, and they were like, "They start taking him in September. Call in September." And so we did. <laughs> we <finally> got in. <laughs> Fills up fast. Then yeah. again, if you want want us to announce birthdays, anniversaries, or questions, just send them to Matt's new mailbox at yahoo.com. It's been on the screen for a while now. Using the subject line AIWF Ringside. Don't forget to include pictures and we'll make a big deal. And uh, we want to interact with you and, and celebrate your great moments with you here on the program. No news. That's a different email. <laughs> yeah, that, That's AIWF 20 at hotmail.com for those. Uh, <laughs> uh, anyways. So uh, WrestleCade happened this weekend and I have to admit, so I'm going to confess to something on the air and that uh, I, 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 it's just been bothering me ever since WrestleCade started. I have thought it was a great concept and a cool event. You know, I've heard a lot of positive feedback from people about it over the years, but just this is me personally. Wrestling convention to me are the fuel that nightmares are made of because, in my eyes, I love wrestling fans. I love going to Spartanburg. I love going to Charlotte, sitting in a crowd of wrestling fans, people that love wrestling. But wrestling conventions seem to draw smart mark type people who've never had anything to do with the wrestling business, but think they know about the wrestling business. And those kind of, kind of people, even when I'm at a wrestling show at WWE in Charlotte or Spartanburg or somewhere, if I'm sitting next to one of those people and they start talking to me, using inside lingo, I shut down. I will not talk to them. I'm not there to talk about the inside of the business. I paid good money for this ticket. I want to sit here and watch the show. 
Now, if you want to talk about how jumping off the top rope is hard on somebody's lateral collateral ligament like Gorilla Monsoon, I'll chat with you all night. But I don't, it, so being trapped in a room that doesn't look like it has good fire exits, but that kind of many people, if, if there was a way to go to WrestleCade and just go to the wrestling and like, you could. and stand in the back corner, why didn't you have can. To talk to anybody? I might, you can do that. Yeah, you can do that. That's okay. well. I'm gonna say this. I don't have that experience there. Okay. All I ha- all I see there are people happy. Well, sometimes mostly happy. <laughs> they're getting their pictures. They're carrying around their stuff to get some. You'll see some people that you can be like, okay, those motherfuckers are just here to get their shit signed to then go sell it on eBay. Yeah. Like, you do see that, but mostly you just see average wrestling fans there meeting you know whoever's there and i don't i i am going to tell you, so for the super show we sat near the um entrance and we were like in the second from last row because i like being at the entrance better than being towards the ring and i'd be goddamned if jack victory wasn't sitting behind us the whole fucking time talking shit the entire fucking match. Every single one of them. He was like, potato, potato, potato. And he was drinking. He was being a goddamn asshole. And I'm going to tell you this right now. We went to the fucking Mellow Mushroom after that fucking show. Jack Victory and a bunch of assholes. C.W. Anderson and the guy that's from Britain that's bald that wrestled um, George that. South. We're in Mellow Mushroom treating that wait staff like pieces of shit. So fuck all three of them. Do not <laughs> go to a fucking restaurant at nine o'clock at night and act like goddamn assholes and be loud and fuckers and then fuck with the wait staff. And then was, because we they the wait staff ori- originally sat us near them and they moved us because they said they were being so loud. Yeah. They were. And then I saw them giving shit to whatever reason, to the people that work there. So I hope all three of those motherfuckers eat shit. Yeah, so, those people that work in those places, man, they make usually less than minimum wage and rely on tips. Mm-hmm. And you go in there, and I'm going to tell you something. For See, that's a really brainless thing to do because these people are handling your food. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you're going to treat them like shit and then expect them to serve you food, and you think that food doesn't at least have spit in it? Got you some know, burgers. Yeah, with I, your burgers. The least Maybe even some jizz. <laughs> and I mean, they, yeah. But because yeah. I will say though that they all left and I saw CW CW Anderson come back in and then kind of mess around the table. And I'm not gonna make any assumptions. Everybody can make their own assumption right, about why somebody back, would come you? why somebody would come back after everybody was gone and do something around the table. He was so, either leaving more tip or taking what was there. It's only two reasons say, you do that. I'm going to say, I'm not going to say which one, but I'm going to assume it's the leaving more. Because I, would, I, was, I would hope so. I would hope, he's yeah, I'd hope so it. too. I hope he's got I that mean, much respect. Because Jack Victory sat behind us, because there was a drunk old guy and he was just talking shit the whole time. And I'm like, and I turned around and looked at the guy and I was like, he looks familiar. And I'm talking, I'm, and I said to Brian, I said, is that fucking Jock, Jack Victory? <laughs> and Brian turned and goes, yeah, I think so. <laughs> but I will tell you my most exciting part of that, though. See, that's not making me want to go to but WrestleCade. It's, but, but let me tell you what the cool thing was, though. I'm sitting there, and this balding, bald guy with a beard comes out, and he sits down, and he's talking to Jack Victory. And I turn around, and I look at Brian, and I said, is that Steve Carino? And I, we turned back and we're like, that's Steve Carino. And yeah. so me, because I sat with Darren, Chastity, and Kristen. And so we're just trying to, you know, like take a picture without taking a picture. But I finally just turned around and said, I just said, hey, man, I'm I'm just a huge fan. I said, I've been watching you for, for forever. And I'm just going to say, I'm just a huge fan. And he shook my hand and he said, he's like, thank you. Thank you very much. He actually seemed shocked that I recognized him so um that was so because of jack victory i guess you can say i got to shake hands with steve carino so but no i it i'm hoping i yeah i was mad about the metal mustard thing i was i was furious yeah that kind of stuff pisses me off too i i saw it it wasn't anybody that was pseudo celebrity i don't even know if i'd go that far with jack victory you know because that that story kind of just 
makes me hot. He's a hell of a flag holder. Yeah, he could do. He was, yeah, he was real good at that. Or do you think Rip Morgan was better? I don't know. <laughs> I'm gonna say Rip Morgan. Well, I, I I saw somebody do that. Uh, there was this couple in uh, the Olive Garden last time we went over there at eight in there, and the guy was just giving the waitress shit. I can't remember. He was. I can't remember. It was about the consistency of the 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 Alfredo sauce or something. And he kept saying, this is too creamy. This is too creamy. And I'm not making fun of his accent. That's what he sounded like. He's like, this is too creamy. This is too creamy. And like, you walked into an Italian restaurant, a chain Italian restaurant, and ordered fettuccine, and you're complaining because it's too creamy. And he was just raising a big stink. And everybody in that section, he kind of turned and was looking at him. And I just, me being me, real loudly as, a, as the uh, uh, waitress walked by our table, and I was like, what is that asshole's problem like that? And, <laughs> and she goes, well, he says the Alfredo sauce is too creamy. And I was like, it's supposed to be creamy in it. And we're saying this <laughs> in, in pretty loud voices where everybody around us can hear. And, um, and I was like, I really hate that. I'm sorry. You got that asshole. Um, it, and you know, I called him an asshole again. And, um, uh, my wife's like, baby, be quiet, be quiet. And I was like, he's not going to do anything. He's the kind of good person that bullies weight staff. It's not like he's going to challenge me to a fight, you know? And if he did, you know, I don't know what would with the Alfredo sauce. <laughs> yeah, just a spoonful yeah. of it right in his eye. Yeah. Just uh, be nice to people that work in restaurants and retail. Yeah, they're good. Because of... you just have no fucking clue unless you've worked in either one of those places how terrible that job is. Right. And plus, no, no matter how bad your food, how badly prepared your food is, the person who's bringing it out to you isn't the one who cooked it. Yep. Even and and you can nicely say, "Oh, I'm. So, th this isn't. This isn't. This isn't cooked right. This 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 doesn't taste not to my taste." Or or yeah. Or or this wasn't what I was expecting. Could I get something else instead? And they will be happy. So they they want you to be happy when you leave. So you'll yeah. leave a good tip. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. So so yeah, you, you can be nice. You you don't have to be an asshole if, if something is wrong. You mm -hmm. can very nicely point out that something is wrong and they will fix it for you. Because and you know the other thing is 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 we came across so many people at that convention, wrestlers, workers, fan who are so nice. Mm -hmm. So nice. Really? Like just super nice like yeah. like steve carino didn't have to speak to me you know mm -hmm. he could have looked at me like fuck off you know but then brian made the comment it's always the people that barely make it that are always the assholes yeah so. the ones who have a chip on their shoulder it's like the legends don't have anything to prove mm -hmm. so that you know they don't uh, they don't act like a big star because they are big stars they don't have to put on a show about how big of a star they are but it's the guys who uh, who just got their foot in the door and never really, never really uh, made it to a higher level? They're the ones who have a chip on their shoulders and act want to come in with a chest chest stuck out and want to act like a big star. Yeah, so, don't you know who I am? No, I don't. Right. no yeah. I don't. So Jack Victory and King fuck right off. Yeah, if I just, yeah. So, yeah, if it, if that if that went down like that, Reagan, I'm right with you. I can't stand people that do that shit. And but it should give you some peace of mind if he was that much of a dick, and uh, and the wait staff told the people in the kitchen about it. Uh, I'm sure some type of foreign fluid went into that. That, that and it's pizza, so how would you ever know? Yeah, exactly. Oh no! If you put some, if you piss on it before it goes in the oven, they'll never know. Yeah, it, it but other than that, I you know I had a lot of fun. Uh, mm -hmm. Got me some really cool earrings. Yeah, the barbed wire chair my, earrings, nice touch. Um, from a woman who. Uh, sales wrestling related earrings. Um, I was gonna give a let's see what's the name. Uh, it's called Mick Nax M I K K N A C K S. They're on Instagram, mm. so I would check her out and get you some wrestling earrings or buttons because they are pretty cool. And then, so it was fun. We we didn't go today because we had stuff to do around the house. But I, I've heard that those shows were good. Um. And then the Super Show was, most of the matches were really good. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, um, yeah, one of my favorites was the uh, the preliminary, you know, the 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 match before the um, before the actual show started. It was a uh, uh, 
was it a six man? It might have been an eight man. It oh, was yeah, yeah. It was White Mike, Axe and Ray. Um, shit. I don't know. Who I don't remember the other two. Was. And then the other Bear team was City Bruiser. Bear Sitter Bruiser, Bruiser, and then um Jack and Zuka King, and a couple of other guys um that I I don't remember off the top of my hand head mm-hmm. um put it on and they. God Almighty! They should have been that match. Should have replaced somebody's match that just does a lot of fucking arm bars. <laughs> I could have taken that match. Way that match was the match of the night, and I'm not just saying that because I know three of the people in it. Like I, God Almighty, White Mike, Jesus! No, oh, yeah, I, so I just over. Talk about, you talk about somebody that's over. He probably got the biggest pop of anybody. anybody anybody i mean maybe the hardys i think maybe the hardys yeah the hardys wrestled up. yeah yes oh. they wrestled heath and rhino but we didn't we didn't stay because i didn't want to try to get out of there with all those people and yeah. i hung. And, yeah and we you know i mean there's nothing wrong with the hardys but they're you know. old and their bump cards about used up. I mean, let's yeah. just be honest. Yeah. yeah, I've seen them and I've seen them live in their prime. I also saw them live when they were Will of the Wisp and whatever the hell Matt Hardy was back in the day in New Dimensions. <laughs> but um that but God, that match, you talk about like a match where I was talking about high spot, high spot looks like a dance. But this match was one of those matches where everybody was doing these spectacular moves. But everything was hard hitting. Every the the story that was being told was great. Everything they did in that ring was magic. So and that crowd, I would say, I would say, from oh some that crowd was into that match the whole fucking time. Whereas I saw other matches where okay, so it was one match between El Hero. V vegan, I think it says vegan. Vegan, uh, son of the, huh? Son of vegan. the vegan, and um, who did he read? Jacob Fatu. Jacob Fatu. They had some really good moves. They had some excellent spots, but the in between, the crowd was just dead because they weren't doing anything. Yeah. It's like they would do absolutely nothing. It was like it was it was like they were just taking turns doing spots. Right. It wasn't even a match. So, maybe I mean, maybe it, we know now why they, Jacob Fatu is not in WWE after you guys saw that. Yeah, I mean, he, he has to learn how to work a match. I mean, and maybe it was because they, but no, you have to be able to to learn to wrestle a smaller guy. You know, it was the the thing, it was the smaller high flyer guy against the, mm-hmm. the, the big brute. But yeah, there, there was just no story mm-hmm. in the match. Yeah, and there was an on the Andrade wrestled um speedball. Speedball Mike Bailey. And that match was really good too, even mm-hmm. though Andretti almost broke his neck because the rope second ropes weren't tight enough. Mm-hmm. And he got mad. You could tell he got really mad. Yeah, he was kicking he kicked the rope. He kicked the ropes. <laughs> um all and, right, um, so yeah, um, so look, anybody over at AML or WrestleCade that thinks we got any hard feelings toward anybody, we've been we've put over your show for two weeks in a row now. We have, and so I have, I have, I and I'm I say this all the time. I am a mark. I'm a mark. I know, and I enjoy WrestleCade. Now there are some aspects of it that were a pain in the ass, like lining up for the Super Show. I got in line at one o'clock. The show doors opened at four. Oh no. They were not, they did not have. So I knew that this side was like express pass VIP. But um this long line was white bracelets and the family four pack, which are the tickets. So we waited in line that whole time. And then okay, VIPs go in, room, you know, one through six, easy pass go through. I'm like, oh, okay. Then they're like, okay, if you have this which is the white bracelet you go in and then the family four pack goes in because the family four packs were the winning tickets and i'm gonna say there were 150 to 200 people with those free tickets wow um um, and so people got kind of pissed because in years before we just all went in before and there's this and i'm just gonna fucking dox him i don't give a fuck there's a guy that works for Rescade. I think his name is Mike. He's a little short guy, real muscular. 
So this old guy got mad and was like, well, we've been waiting. Why are they? And he goes, yeah, because y'all got free tickets and they paid. If you paid, you would be going in right now. And I was like, fuck that guy. Oh, that's a hell of a thing to say. Fucking 200 tickets. Then don't give away free tickets. And then fucking be an asshole to somebody who says, hey, man, I've been waiting here three hours. Right. Well, see, that's another thing. Why do you, why would you have to wait three hours? If the show start, what time did the show start? Five? Five. All right. Why couldn't I show up with my ticket that I bought off the internet for $15 or $20 or whatever? Well, because they're not just... assigned seats. So the only assigned seats are the VIP seats, mm-hmm. which are rows one through six. Yeah. Those are the assignments. Everything else is general admission. And so the problem was, and I wouldn't have an issue with this, if they had better, like, okay, they should buy those ropes, you know, the, the black thing that has the, the rope you pull like this and put into another one, mm-hmm. another pole, and they should have, they should have VIP rope, VIP line, um, line for the people that bought tickets, free ticket line. And then I'd be like, okay, it's, it's very well marked. I know what's going on. That's fine. But don't give me fucking attitude because I won free tickets. If you don't like that, don't fucking give away free tickets. Right. Yeah. Because the whole thing, it's like, congratulations, you won free tickets. Fuck right, you. Peasant. No, right. It's like, yeah. don't say I won tickets and then get, like, why would I buy tickets if I won free tickets? Yeah. It's like, well, they paid for their tickets. Yeah, and I won these tickets. Well, my what I don't understand, what what's driving me nuts in this whole conversation is if if we know that the super show starts at five, why are there people getting in line at one and two o'clock and just so you to can stand get good seats? Oh, because nothing except the res- first things in it. Uh, right. Yeah. yeah. But that room's One, small enough that it doesn't look like, I mean, it looks like you could stand in the back corner and still see pretty good. Oh, yeah. I'm a, yeah. The room, it, it's big, but it's not huge. And like, you can stand at the side, you know, and watch. But like, I'm not going to make any comment about anything else. I'm just going to say that was shitty. Yeah. Don't fucking be an asshole. To the people who won the tickets, especially when in years past, people who won tickets just went in with everybody else. The right. and we're, trans- we're not talking about Brian and Tracy here, Val. Let's be no, clear. No, no, this no, is no, one no, of their no. employees. About some other guy that works yeah. for them that I've seen there, you know, running the lot running the rows and I mean not running the lines and, and stuff. He was the one that was the asshole. Was not Tracy, was not Brian. I saw Tracy going up and down trying to put the put the line in order for the VIP and Express Pass people. I saw him doing that. I didn't I didn't see Brian anywhere, but just because but you know Tracy was doing that. He was perfectly nice to everybody. He was fine. Like, I'm not saying anything shitty about them. It's whoever that motherfucker was. Well, you, you know, don't his name. <laughs> well, good. As you see, I guess I probably won't win tickets ever again, but I don't really care. Uh, so well, you'll get in quicker. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Rick Diesel. Uh, you'll be nice to you. Rick Diesel, um, have you got anything you want to rant about this week? What's been pissing you off this week? Besides the fact good. that are you good this week? Holiday spirit has hit Rick Diesel. Mm-hmm. No, no, no. Uh uh-uh. Holiday. I don't like holidays, so I'm still trying to overcome the damn thing. What don't you like about the holidays? Having to buy presents for everybody? No, it ain't that. I just don't like holidays. Really? Yeah, banks are closed. That pisses me off. Mail yeah. don't run. That pisses me off. Right. You know. Well, I mean, it, you do get, you know, you get a day off work. I am angry a lot. You you, you get a day off work and, and, and usually. I don't. You, yeah, you don't work on Christmas now, do you? Yeah. I'm, it's usually, I could be like, like today, it's Sunday, and I've been in here uh, categorizing all this freaking stuff from 30 years, trying to get everything together on one external. It's like I'm putting all the Mid Atlantic episodes on one external now. Oh boy. Yeah. So I did I know what I forget to say. I did I did joke to Brian. I had several people come up to me at Russicade and be like, Hey Brian Reagan, hey, hey, can't wait to listen to you Sunday. So I appreciate, <laughs> I appreciate I told you. that that uh reached out and said hey to us. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, especially our favorite, our favorite uh, independent wrestler who landed on his head in his oh, back. Really? Oh, uh, <laughs> he was there. Yes. yes, and I didn't know who he was, and then Darren told me who he was because he spoke to us, and we we're like, "Hey, yeah, nice seeing you. Oh. Good to see you. Good to see you." <laughs> and because uh, I I recognized everybody else that spoke to me, but I did not recognize him. And then Darren Darren told me, yeah. Oh mercy! Oh, I didn't well. recognize him not being upside down with his <laughs> with his head bouncing with off the apron. Yeah, his spine compressing against the apron. You know, <laughs> I'm glad he lived, and I'm glad he can still walk. Oh yeah, oh I'm yeah. I, don't want I any- hope he never does that again. Do not ever set foot inside another wrestling ring, young man. Until you are trained. No, don't ever. No, oh, don't even do that. No, okay. I don't even. Want- I, I want him put on a North Carolina, Virginia, South Carolina wrestling blacklist. Please do not train this boy. <laughs> But, but the sound poster. effects, the sound effects were so good. I know. Like, I'm feeling in the thud. The acoustic, the, the acoustics in that building and that ring are are fantastic. So, uh, it's almost I, worth them doing it again just to get to hear that. Yeah, it was mm-hmm. it kind of. Uh, it was. But, um, it we was also cool, saw a cool but kind of sickening, oh. like when you're at yeah. a NASCAR race and they have a real high speed crash, and the car hits the wall and you hear that thud and that crunch. You know, you don't hear that on TV, but it's like, it's cool, but it's also like, God, and I hope they're all right. That, that was that same kind but of But it's sound. also, yeah, that's why I bought a ticket. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then you're like, you're like, yeah, that's what happens. That's what yeah. happens when you don't get trained and you, and you just right. think you can just step into a ring and do whatever the hell you want to. Yeah. I had a great weekend. I had a great weekend. Well, I'm glad I, I hope everybody did. Today, but there was stuff we had to do. I was looking for, and I cannot wait to Seth Clayton Byrne tells his Wardlow story. I'll let him. I don't want to spoil his his big moment. We need to have him on here sometime. We I do. Was, I was a. Uh, I was going to uh, talk to Rick Diesel about. It. I would love to hear. You know Brian Hawks that works with Wrestlecade and AML. You know he was a commissioner here in the AIWF before they started AML, and. I have always wanted to pick his brain about the logistics and what a pain in the ass it is for him and Tracy to get everybody together for WrestleK to get the schedule set up, you know, um, all the logistics that go involved. Cause supposedly they have partner hotels there in Winston um, mm-hmm. and all that kind of stuff. And just like that seems like such a chore putting something like that together that's why you've never seen me do any you know attempt to even be involved with anything like that because when they first started doing wrestle kate i remember thinking man that seems like a lot of work you know and it just seemed like it's it's only gotten worse over the years and they're still having problems with logistics it sounds like with people getting mad in the lines and the lines getting all twisted up and you know, uh, that happens every year that we go. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Every year that we go, the line is a clusterfuck. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and I just can't. Yeah. And see, that's not fun to me paying Very all that money to say it's standing. Yeah. It don't seem like fun to me to st- pay all that money to stand in line. You know, it just doesn't. Well, the thing is, for us, we, we had, we had went through both rooms like, of the right, convention. Right, yeah. Right, several right. times. Yeah. It was, it was one, one thirty. And we were just sitting, uh, we were just like sitting over in a corner and then we saw people lining up and then the line kind of reached us and we were like, well, we might as well just, since we're just sitting around and talking, we might as well just get in the line and sit and talk. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, and then we just, that's what we did. We, we just sat, you know, and we, people would come by that we knew and we would talk to them for a while and, I mean, the, the time went by pretty uh-huh. quickly because, you know, again, we were just sitting, talking around, telling stories and, mm-hmm. you know, and again, people would, uh, you know, people that we, we saw that we knew would uh-huh. would come by and we would talk to them for a while. And then we talked to some people that were in front of us and behind us telling us about, telling them about our, you know, our promotion and where we were and that we had a podcast, video, uh, Facebook live um, thing on Sunday nights and, so we, we also did some promoting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. PR. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, that was, it was beneficial. I, I Every year that I go, I like it. Mm-hmm. So, and, you know, I'm not, I mean, 
Yeah. It sounds like to me, though, like the way you guys describe the rooms and going through there. All right, let's say the Super Show started at 5 o'clock. If I had a Saturday ticket. Now, if I buy a ticket to the wrestling, does that include being able to go to the rooms? So they have they have a, like different ways to buy tickets. So for every, like if you don't get like the whole three-day weekend thing, uh -huh. you can buy tickets for the Super Show. You can buy tickets for the room to meet the... Um, you can buy tickets to meet the in the fan fest. That's what they call it. You can buy a ticket for the fan fest. You can buy tickets okay. for every thing that you want to go to. So if it's a separate to. ticket. If I want to right. come and watch the wrestling, I can't go into the right. rooms with the unless with the you wrestlers. buy like the whole. Like they have packages for for all three days. Yeah, they uh -huh. have. But if you just wanted to go to the super show, you just spend 30 bucks and get super show like i think that's the starting price right um, and you know, stay, and then i can stand in the back and hide you know yeah like, <laughs> but like the you know the i do think some of the logistical issues are like usually when they have a really big name they put them in a separate room but this year the hardy boys were like smack dab in the middle and i've just seen like i missed billy gunn the first few times because he was being blocked by the Hardy line, mm. uh, you know, and, and so, and then like Lana, Lana, Lana and Andre day were also in that spot. So they had big long lines. Mm. And so it was kind of like, if you weren't like, it was easily to easy to miss some of the people be but, cram crammed in a room with that many people just yeah. seems like hellish torture to me. I will so, say what's really so, funny, not making this has nothing to do with Rick. Every time we went by Scott Steiner, he either had a staff member sitting with him or a police officer sitting with him. <laughs> right beside, right him. beside him, like they were his keeper. Yeah. <laughs> like, his, I guess he's like afraid. a babysitter. I guess they're afraid somebody's going to say something to him sideways, uh, uh, you know, because of his goodwill and temperament toward others. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and he'll hop up and that will be an incident. Was. Yeah. It, they don't want it to be an incident. Considering you know. I saw him go off because they played the first year we went, they paid Steiner line yeah. for his music. And he went the fuck off. He's like, shut that fucking music off. I hate that goddamn song. <laughs> and I was like, holy moly, he was uh -huh. mad. Yeah. Um, when he, before he closed that Shoney's up in Ackworth, Georgia, uh, Con, it was the, in the early days of the Tony Schiavone podcast. And, um, and, Conrad would make a joke about the salad bar at Scott Steiner's Shoney's had the best ham cubes uh, if, of any salad bar anywhere. And so wrestling fans that listen to Tony Schiavone's podcast started calling the restaurant and asking if the ham cubes were available. And it got to the point that it like caused Scott, Scott Steiner to get really upset with Conrad and tell him he was going to kick his ass. And so, uh, and, and like they say to this day, if you walk up to Scott Steiner and say, Hey man, how are the ham cubes? He will lose his shit. <laughs> I'm going to tell you one thing I'm never going to do is walk up to Scott Steiner and say a damn thing. Yeah. Uh, no, I would say, I would say this. I'm a big fan. How's your brother? That's the only two <laughs> things I would ever say to him. You know, no. All I, right. So Josh Bowman says it was Mandy Sachs and Lacey Evans that were on the back wall, but still two people that had a pretty significant line also. Um, Lace, La Lacey that, that must have been the porn section. What? Well, no, Lacey Evans didn't do porn, did she? Well, I'm sure she probably got OnlyFans. Um, I don't they, they all do. Um, who was the other one? <laughs> Lacey Evans. Lacey and Evans and Mandy Sachs. I don't know who. Mandy Rose. Mandy Sachs is Mandy, Mandy Rose. Rose. Mandy Rose. She's Mandy Rose. Yeah. Oh no, we yeah. know she's got an OnlyFans. Yeah. That what's what you know, I'm super excited. I got to meet Vampiro. I'm a huge Vampiro fan. He liked my shirt that I was wearing. He thought it was really funny and showed it off to had me show it to the people sitting around him, which are the clowns that were from NWA. Oh wow! I'm glad to hear my say big meaty meat. Big what? Big what is it say? Big hmm? meaty men slapping meat. Yeah, big meaty men slapping meat. And he yeah, thought that was Vampiro's, yeah. Vampiro's agent drove me crazy this past summer trying to get him on one of our shows oh my god i would be so excited it, his it was 
his demands were outrageous. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. Oh my. I, I finally just told him, I said, I'm not interested. I'm sorry. I'd love to have him, but I mean, and we, we, we went back and forth for weeks. Yeah. But I mean, if you got, I mean, if you got somebody that's acting Mariah Carey level of crazy at a wrestling show, you know, I don't want this bowl of M&Ms in the green room until all the brown ones are picked out. You know, it, you, it's just too much sometimes. Yeah. For these I mean, yeah. I mean, he was nice to the fans. He was nice to me. He was pleasant. And I can, I've, you know. I've been doing this too long to have to, you know what I'm saying? To put up with that I, bullshit. Yeah, oh, yeah. I don't have to. I mean, yeah. they're, they're, they're no better than me or anybody on my show. Yeah. So if they're going to be, if they're going to be like that, you know, then I'm not going to bring them in. And I mean, really, and how many times, I mean, other than the rock and rolls last match, when you bring names in, do you, does it even, do they make an impact at the gate that covers it's, their expense plus at our shows, more? No. No. No, at our shows, no, because our fans couldn't care less. I mean, they, no. I, we'd bring a name in every once in a while as, as a, a gift to our fans. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But we don't, I've been doing this, we've been doing what, thir almost 32 years now. Yeah. And I've never been one of these promoters that, that thinks, oh, well, I got to bring in all these names or all these big indie names or these people I, to, to, to get people in my door. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? No. And, and But there's a lot of promoters out there that, that have that insecurity. They think if they ain't got fans and if they, they got names then they, you know, they're not going to draw and, and, but, and they may not. And then again, they might, but you know, you know, I, I think we've that, always been able to use other people's trainees and draw. So, yeah. <laughs> and, but you know, that night that Samoa Joe came up there, that was a, that was a fun time. Yeah. That show at the armory several years ago, that was a fun night. And well, we got him, we got him because he was only we knew he was going to WWE and we wanted him to make a stop here on the way. Yeah, and he he stopped, he ran and did that show for us on Saturday night and came down here and did a show for PWX on Sunday. Yeah. And so, you know, he got two. We got a good deal there. because of that too. We were, we kind of worked all that out together. Oh wow. That yeah. was great. Not many fans are like their own beast. That's why I love them. That's why yeah. I love our fans because like they they smell bullshit a mile away. Yeah. You know, like I just feel like I feel like we have some of and I, you know, I and I'm not just saying that to blow smoke up their ass. I just wouldn't mention it, you know. But they, you know, they they make us. Do you know what I mean? Like they are they 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 know what they like, they want to see what they like, they know who they hate, you know, because I've seen people come to our shows like they 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 want someone to make a connection with them. And I think that's why they aren't always as interested in like bigger indie names or bigger names because they want that connection. They don't want to feel like just a a spot for a name to make money. That's what I maybe and, and our fans will make you work for their appreciation. <laughs> right. Yeah. You have to but when you get it, you got it. Yeah. Because <laughs> if yeah. you if you go in there and don't don't do it and don't interact with them and all like they'll sit on their hands they'll be quiet as a church mouse mm -hmm. but, but if you get them involved or you tell them to shut up they're old school man they'll get into it and mm -hmm. i mean oh, yeah jack and clara can tell you they're, they've been attempted murders on them several times in that building so and and then lazarus black is probably going to find that out next year too if he keeps doing what he's doing so, well, yeah, I just, yeah, I feel like I can on, honestly say that that we are one of the few wrestling promotions in the world that can say we actually bred our fans. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? At, for 30 years, we've been breeding our fans. Yeah, well, I mean, it's, it's because our fans have had kids and they brought their kids. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, and and we've got wrestlers that wasn't even born when we started this. So, yeah. Our fans are diehard grassroots. They know what they want. They 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 know we'll give them what they want, and they're loyal to us. So and and for any old timers out there who miss the cheers and all that kind of stuff, I discovered something at the last show I was at that might benefit you. If you're missing hearing those cheers, just show up to the show, hang out with us, say hey to everybody, 
find a spot in the crowd, sit down. At some point during the show, I will introduce you. And our fans are so cool that the, a lot of them, like Rick Diesel said, we're not even born when we were doing stuff in the 90s. And I can, if you're a 90s guy, I can introduce you. And that place will give you a round of applause and cheer for you just out of respect. Respect. For, for the old, you know, for the how old the promotion is and stuff like that. So if you could use a pop to pick up your spirits, come and see us. <laughs> We'd love to have you. Any of you guys, uh, you know, from back in the day. Come get a dose. We'll be your dealer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm as I'm scratching my neck like 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 um like a drug fiend. Yeah. 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 Oh, I like Nick Foley. I always you know what? That, that is something that, that you that you touched on, Matt, that that I, I deeply feel like with our fans, uh, even in the AWF, especially in the mid-Atlantic, is we've been around so long. That it is, it's it, it, we have something that ninety nine percent of the other companies in this in this business don't have on our own independent level, and that's respect from our fans. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because I mean we've been there. We don't talk down to them. We no, don't, we don't. It, usually, usually, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not thinking about you riding, riding that damn battle royal a few years ago where four referees missed a call and nobody knew what happened. But usually, the things are not so convoluted that they the fans can understand what's going on it's yeah it's not overbooked it's it's no no awa team challenge it's and it's definitely no pwx obnoxious wrestling fan crowd at cabarrus arena nothing nothing against pwx but their fans well whatever happened to them they still going i don't think so i hadn't i had a charlotte carlock dealer to go promotion one i think so but joe joe moss has a promotion too um and he's a charlotte car dealer and and they were running back during the summer they ran infamously ran the bojangles coliseum with the arena football field turf still I down remember, yeah i remember that that it, and the crowd was horrible yeah ella it envy, looked horrible in that big old building yes you shouldn't have done that ella envy worked on that show and she said it was uh like the old piss hole in a snowbank type deal she's yeah. like she said it didn't even put seats out on the field the fans were in the, in the stands yeah 20 25 feet away from the ring so uh yeah but, but um i had i had fun i love it there that's why we came back you know Always yeah. drives you back. Always <laughs> brings you back. You can't get away. Yeah. Um, I thought I was out. They pulled me back in. Yeah. Well, what what happens? You're like, hey, I, I miss those guys. I'm just going to go. I'm just going to go to a show and say hello to everybody. Yeah. And then that's how it starts. Yep. And then, <laughs> and then and you then get slowly, slowly but surely you get you get sucked right back in. Well, uh, that's how I ended up back in there. Uh, it I got rolled up in there in 2014. I can't even remember what show it was. Just to watch and say hey to everybody. And the next thing I know, Ty's walking up to me. Hey, man, I really need a ring announcer tonight. You think you can do it? <laughs> Look at us now. Yeah, yeah. it's crazy. <laughs> now I've got a it's YouTube crazy. channel and a podcast. And, We've been going for just about two hours now. Uh, Josh Bowman, Josh Bowman has said twice that he wishes the AIWF had had a table at WrestleCade, and because mm. uh, Ring Wars Carolina was there, and their uh, the guy that has the chic gimmick came up to me and was giving me a flyer, and I was like, "Well, I was like, you're an AIWF affiliate, right?" He's like, "Yeah." I was like. Yeah, I, I produced the show in Mount Airy. I said, oh, okay, hey, hey, how are you doing? Yeah, so well, they were if, really working themselves well, too. Well, I'll like, tell you what, they, if Joshua Bowman wants to pay for that table, we'll be glad to show up and stand around and shake everybody's hand. <laughs> I, I, I'm not going to pay for a, uh, and like I said, this may sound like I'm taking a shot, but I'm not going to pay for a table to have some of my guys go down there and sit uh, in the middle of, you know, all that when the fans could just come to Mount Rain and see them 30 minutes up the road. Yeah. And, and it just and, seems pointless to me. It's, I mean, that's, that's an, that's me stroking my own ego and I'm not going to do that. Now, as, a, as a Mark, I, I enjoyed it. I enjoy meeting people. I enjoy talking because it's a diff in that. Now, if they want to give me one. Yeah. <laughs> and tell me how yeah. to pay for it. I'm like, okay. Yeah. All right, so but, right, uh, yeah. You, you guys want us up there? Just offer us a free table, man. We'll, we'll yeah, we'll come. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I'd like to come see oh, it. And, and, like, they know why I won't pay for it either. We get it sponsored. We get it sponsored. 
Yeah. Oh, Lord. Yeah. You know, if they, somebody wants to pay for it, we'll come up here and stand around. Maybe I'll face this phobia that I have of, of big wrestling conventions. And It's really not right. I don't know that I'm, I can't, I can't think of, well, oh my God, I have one story to tell. I do have one story. To tell. You've told already more than one story. Well, this is another one. That's my last one. I'm just going to say Ricky and Terry worked heel against Effie and Effie's partner, Allie and Violet J at the GCW show. And it was Richard Morton, Carrie Morton and George South. Heard Not going to go funny. into anything other than the woman behind me was the biggest Ricky Morton fan I have ever had in my entire life. And when the whole time she's screaming, about Ricky. I'm talking about screaming like I I can't even explain how into it she was. When George South turned on them, she almost had a mental breakdown and she started screaming, Fuck you, George South. <laughs> and I turned around and I was like, that's the first thing you said I've agreed with the whole time. <laughs> and then she was so fucking mad, she left before wow. that show was over. Wow. She left because she was so mad at what they did to Ricky Ricky Morton. Yeah. She uh uh she was probably a teenager in 86, wouldn't you probably? Mm. Yeah, probably. Had to so. have been. And you know I love Ricky. Yeah, I mean, I love Ricky Morton. I always have, but yeah, that was I thought she was going to lose her fucking mind. Mm. And hey, the uh, the video of me and Ricky back in 2009 uh, that's up on the AIWF network has gathered a lot of views. Is it? Yeah. I, uh, the one where we was talking about our kids. Yes. I was behind the camera on that deal. I remember that. I was in the ring with you and I was like, I showed that to Alice the other day. She just went. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was a fun night. I always li- liked when Ricky came to the shows, man, because Ricky gets going in the back, man, and you can learn so much from him. Just him yeah. telling stories from the road. Um, and uh, uh yeah <laughs> I, i'm Ricky's, thinking of a couple yeah <laughs> gla- boogie woogie in the glass to. coffee table yeah <laughs> oh my god the very first show i ever went to with that um in in uh virginia where we were at the where y'all were at the vegetable place the produce yeah, yeah. P- he was produce. There, and when he went to his he there was a baby in a carriage and he asked me and my friends can can you watch can you watch him for a minute and I'm thinking, I wonder if that was Carrie. <laughs> uh, in ni- in the nineties, it might have been Little Ricky. I don't Carrie. know. It so would have been like it would have been Carrie. Nine, Kelly, Kelly, Kelly. Right. Be, I don't know though. Kelly, Kelly's older than Carrie, I think. Yeah, because Kelly is the one that that him and Allison literally stayed on the phone all the time in this very room that I'm sitting in right now. And back in those days, what, 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 had long distance charges gone away? That was oh nine. So yeah, I mean the cell phones were getting cheaper by then, I guess. Yeah, mm-hmm. they they was. So um, yeah, I did. It, it, if they'd have been a little older, me and Ricky could have been in laws. <laughs> well, now you're an in law with Don Carson's free bro. <laughs> so one of them had to get me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, good lord, it's eight thirty. Yeah. <laughs> yes, it is. Yep. Well, remember after Robert told Ned in the first episode of Game of Thrones, we'll join our houses. Everything went to shit after that. So, <laughs> but you know, one reason that I love Ricky Morton, though, not only does he have great, he's 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 humble, and he still can fucking go, and yeah, he yeah. can go like a, like like he's it, like he was in the eighties, like you know, and and. I think that's one of the things that's really great about Ricky Morton is is you can tell that he loves this business and he respects this business and he's about making this business look good, not just about making himself. I mean, he's still trying to make himself look good, but yeah, you know, I just feel like of of all the older guys, you just Ricky just still has it. He yeah, still has it. Mm-hmm. Yep. All right. And uh, so that that's I think we've about done all we can do this week. We'll be back next week for some more of this. We won't have Russell K to talk about, but we'll find something else to talk well, about. Well, I got I sent you that we'll have to watch that video next time. What? Uh, oh no, it's copyrighted. I, I will get popped. We can't do it without sound. Oh, no, I need to figure out a way to. I gotta, I gotta figure. I gotta figure out a way to block. The algorithm will spot the picture, 
but some other podcasts that show videos from YouTube, they will, they have figured out a way to put a logo up in front of the screen share that throws off the algorithm. So you can at least still hear it and like see the edges of it. I've got to figure out how to do that. But, oh, I oh yeah. If we could just hear it, I would love for just that one part. We could probably do that. I can play. I can get away with sound. It's just a yeah. video. Oh, happy birthday! Uh, Merry Christmas, Charles King, Chuck King. All right, uh, Merry Christmas, Chuck. Chuck King. Hey, Chuck. I got a. I found his shoot video he did with Scott Island. I'm gonna put that up on the network for a long. Oh, okay. How about or eventually? Uh, it should be 2026. When I, I think of Chuck, I'll get around to it. As good a wrestler as he was, as much as I liked the guy, he was the angriest chief ring crew guy I have ever seen. He wanted it done right. Old I'm school. telling you, by God, God, if you <laughs> don't put those poles right there, <laughs> damn right. Yeah, if you made one, if you after you took the ring apart, if you before you uh, made one move toward that truck with anything. You better, be, you better get his attention and be like, hey, Chuck, where do these, put it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, where does this go? Where oh, no, don't put that in there yet. Get, get it had to go out. just right or the trailer wouldn't pull right. He yeah. put in mind. He yeah. knew what he was doing. Yeah, and 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 I do understand why he would get hot, especially if we pulled that thing up to Ronsford, West Virginia or something, and he had to traverse that mountain coming down with the yeah. rain. Oh, yeah. Lord, no. Yeah, that's that's some scary shit. But yeah, anytime I think about Chuck King, I'm thinking it's like angry, angry ring crew supervisor guy. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it could cut a hell of a promo too. Oh man! I, all right, Merry Christmas, Chuck. Well, we're gonna get out of here. We've been going for too long, uh, but thank you for joining us. Thank you for watching. I know the watch time has increased a lot on YouTube. Appreciate that. Hope you all have a great week and we'll see you back here next sunday night or whenever you're watching on youtube whenever you find it uh for brian reagan for rick diesel i'm mad matt carter we'll see you next week finn if, let me try that again <laughs> i'm gonna do bob's outro right I ain't uh. Like, I ain't like, uh, let's see we'll see you next week fans and until next time so long for now still fucked it up but yeah it's okay. it was close <laughs>